I think touring with a band like Paramore, especially, was cool because it it raised the bar, it forced us to raise the bar. You know, I think that yeah. anytime uh, a band is really good at their craft, mm -hmm. it makes it so okay. you want it to be as good or you know better. Yeah. It's always cool when you go out to see another band show and you're like, oh my god, I'm blown away. It makes you want to have it that good of a show. Well, and specifically to a band like Paramore, you know, a lot of our strengths, I think, they have similar strengths, so it's like, as a singer, you know, sometimes I'll rely on that. Yeah. You, you know, you'll play with another band and you'll be like, well, they were awesome, but I can sing better. I don't know that I can sing better than Haley. I gotta, you know, I, like, I've got to sing exactly as good, you know? <laughs> so it's, the, it's, it's fun. It's a fun challenge to, to play with somebody like that. I think that uh, to address the part of the question that I relate to is that I think that the last album was there was kind of a like a like a raw spirit mm -hmm. like a kind of like you know let's get this thing good rolling again and you know um, I think this one allowed us to have or allowed at least like lyrically there would be the perspective of like what has happened in the past, you know, th three years where we took time off, and like, what has happened beyond that, like, jumping back into this thing, and I think that there is an overwhelming, like, romantic kind of theme, like, but like a modern romance, so it's like bizarre, and there's funny moments, and there's darkly funny moments, and kind of sad moments, um, uh, that I don't think existed necessarily on Save Rock and Roll. Yeah. But I mean, there was more to the question, I'm sure. Like Say so rock and roll, like because we'd just gotten like back together and we were kind of figuring out how we were gonna do the band again. Um, we kind of like we, we we had a lot of help putting everything together, um, so there wasn't like uh, complete cohesiveness. And with this album, like we figured out how the band works this time around uh, a lot better. So there was like definitely some musical cohesiveness to the whole album, which I think uh, is very apparent. We yeah, them back to back. I would say Save Rock and Roll was a little bit of an experiment, and and American Beauty, American Psycho was a little bit more of a plan. You know, we, we knew what we were doing, we knew what we wanted to do, because <laughs> to say it. Yeah, so. uh, I don't think so. I don't think that it was like that purposeful. I think that the idea for some of it was um, this could be anywhere, anyone, you know, and for us that is a certain kind of Americana su suburb, but I've seen it, we saw it around the world touring, it's just um, since we didn't grow up in it, it's harder, it would be harder and less authentic for us to like talk about the suburb of Tokyo or something like it just wouldn't make as much sense because we don't have as much experience with it, but the idea was that you could be feeling these feelings kind of anywhere in the world, you know, and we just kind of tried to create one world that people could inhabit and, and, and see our version of that. <laughs> it was cool, I mean, I feel like, uh, for us going out and performing on this on American Beauty American Psycho, this is the first time where we saw the other night there was like two circle pits going and it was cool. You know, like it was like cool to see that, especially during the title track, see like how much people were going off and stuff. Because you like, when you're doing it in the studio, you never, you're like, I hope this is like one of those songs. But like to actually have that feeling was really cool. Favorite record right now uh, for me is uh, Drake. If you're reading this, it's too late. Right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I just always have to go back to um, my favorite records, and I guess probably Elvis Costello, this year's model. It was just a really influential record on it. Uh, I've been listening to two records back to back since I've been here. RJD2, Dead Ringer, and M83, Dead Cities. They're both very cinematic. Uh, M83 is Dead Cities. 
and then RJD2 uh, dead ringer. RDD2. RDD2. Yeah, RDD2. Uh, my favorite record right now is Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly. I've been listening to a lot of Juicy J today. I'm learning a lot. A lot of good lessons. Sorry. <laughs>
and um, and uh, there are songs of his that I really love and really resonate with, and so I think there are you know I think at some point my kid will probably hear our music and and if he had to hear this record I I would hope that he would like mm, kids aren't all right I, I just like that song a lot I thought it was I thought that was to me one of the, the real high points of this record. Do, do you have uh, no <laughs> <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I feel like it would be, uh, <clears throat> it would cool, be cool to do uh, The Kids Aren't Alright, especially with Patrick's son. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a visual to go with it. But uh, uh, the first time you, we came to Japan as uh, you know Americans. We'd seen what we'd seen from movies or whatever, but there's this experience that's just completely different than anything that you had before as an American, you know. And I think it would be cool to uh, kind of show that off, you know, and, and show off the friends that we've met here and the like little places from the robot restaurant, like all the little <laughs> strange places that we found and the cool places that we found and the historical places. It would be cool to kind of like do that all in in like some kind of like you know like time lapse that made it really fast. Mm -hmm. Experience it all at once. Um, originally, we weren't exactly sure uh, that that was going to be the cover. Um, I think. There's moments in the, you know, the first verse of "Kids Aren't All Right" and stuff that just kind of des describe this, um, like we were talking about, like this suburban existence, like this kind of, um, uh, it's like mundane, but so much is happening, and like it's uh, wild, but completely, you know. Um, domestic at the same, you know, domesticated at the same time, like, uh, the references to the, you know, like the, the bear riding the tricycle in the circus that kind of goes crazy, uh, or whatever, and, uh, it just seemed like this, this kid that we met there had this really innocent, like, about, look about him, you know, and it's just like, what's the threshold where that, that, that can snap and change and that kind of thing, I guess that's what, it was supposed to mean, but it could mean anything to whatever, 